एवरीवन माय नेम इज हर्ष एंड टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द वेरी फर्स्ट प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम द सी पी थर्टी वन शीट बाई टी एल एलिमिनेटर्स अंडर द इलेवन हंड्रेड रेटिंग रेंज सो लेट्स बिगिन आई विल बी मूविंग ऑन टू द सी पी थर्टी वन शीट इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड माई प्रॉब्लम वी कैन सी द इलेवन हंड्रेड रेटिंग पैरामीटर हैज बिन टिक्ड सो एंड वी कैन सी द क्लिकेबल लिंक ऑफ आवर प्रॉब्लम सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द प्रॉब्लम सो द नेम ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम इज इट इज फर्स्ट और सेकेंड लेटर so you are given a string s of length n let's define two operations you can apply on the string you can either remove the first character of the string or remove the second character of the string your task is to find the number of distinct non empty strings that can be generated by applying the given operations on the initial string any number of times possibly zero in any order okay so you are given a string from that string you can either remove the first character or the second character any number of time you want so the question wants you that uh, to tell that how many distinct non empty strings you can generate looking up to the constraint you are given the number of test cases of the order of 10 power 4 and the size of the string is of the order of 10 power 5 and it is guaranteed that the sum of n over all the test cases does not exceed 2 multiplied by 10 power 5 so you need to output a single integer that is the number of distinct non empty strings you can get so this is the question let's understand how we can solve this okay so first of all what the question is the question is that you are given a string let's suppose i assume any string initially i let's suppose assume a string a b c a d now from this string you can either remove the first character or the second character and generate some other string so let's suppose from this particular string i decided to remove the first character so if i remove the first character the string that i will obtain is b c a d let me take okay i will obtain b c a d and if i remove the second character if i decide to remove the second character the string that i will re- i will obtain is a c a d now from this particular string again i have two options i can either remove the first character or the second character so let me remove the first character if i remove the first character the string that i will obtain is cad if i remove the second character the string that i will obtain is bad similarly from this particular string again i have two options removing the first character gives me cad and removing the second character gives me ad now again from this particular string i have two options either i remove the first character or the second character if i remove the first one i get ad If I remove the second one, I get C D. Similarly, from this string, removing the first character gives me A D. Removing the second character gives me B D. Again, from this string, you can see that this string was already encountered before, so we are not uh, breaking this string again since we have already done this one time. Now, from this particular string, again we have two options: either we get A D. or even if we remove the second character we will get ad only so we are getting the same string now again we are getting three ads so we will break only one ad so if we break this particular ad the possible strings are a and d we will obtain a when uh, we will remove the second character we will obtain d when we will remove the first character similarly from cd we will obtain c and d and from bd we will obtain b and d now what were the steps that we followed every time we either remove the first character or the second character right now let's count the number of distinct strings that we were able to obtain so this is one of the distinct string this is the one this is the one then this this the cad has been encountered before so we are not counting it again then this aad then this ad cd and bd and then this a b c and b so can you count the number of distinct non empty strings that you were able to obtain 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 30 so you were able to obtain 13 distinct non empty strings so the answer with this particular string as a starting string will be 13 this is actually the demand of the question that how many distinct non empty strings you can generate if you are at every point of time removing either the first character or the second character from the string this is actually what the question is so i hope the question is clear so how we can solve this 
So if you think of what we want, we want the total number of distinct non-empty substring. So initially when we had this string with us, A, B, C, A, D, initially when we started with A, B, C, A, D, what is the length of this string? The length of this string is 5, right? Now what are the possible strings that you can obtain? The strings that you can obtain can either be of length 5, can either be of length 4, can either be of length 3 can either be of length 2 or it can be of length 1, right? If I say you that I have a string of length 5, tell me the number of characters that you will delete from this original string. You will remove 0 characters, right? Similarly, if I talk of string of length 4, how many characters will you remove? You will remove 1 character. Similarly, when I talk of string of length 3, how many characters to remove? 2. Similarly, when I talk of string of length 2, how many characters will you remove? 3. Similarly, when I talk of string of length 1, how many characters you will remove? 4, right? So, if we are able to find that, okay, how many strings of length 4 are there? Let's, let me tell you the length of, number of strings of length 4 is x1, number of strings of length 3 is x2, number of strings of length 2 is x3, number of strings of length 1 is x4, and number of length, and number of strings of length 5 is, is, should we name it a variable or a single number? This is the original string which is of length 5. Can I obtain any other string of length 5? No, right? There is only one possible string. So can I say the total number of distinct non-empty string will be nothing but 1 plus x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4? Can I say this? So if I am able to generate this x1, x2, x3 and x4, my job is done. Right? So how we can do this? Before proceeding to how we can actually solve this, the one thing that we should keep in mind is the constraints. The constraints given to us, the n, that is the same string size that is given to us, is, is of the order of 10 power 5. So what is the expected time complexity of this problem? You can proceed with n, you can proceed with n log n, you can proceed with n square root of n. You can proceed with something like log n as well. You can proceed with something like square root of n as well. But anything like n square, anything time complexity like n square or n cube, this is something that is not allowed. So you need to de uh, you need to derive an approach that will help you to solve this question within this time complexity. This is actually what your expected time complexity is. This is what your expected time complexity is. Okay, so let's see how we can solve this. Let me help you with the example of this particular case with the string length of 3. So this is my original string and I will help you to find out how many strings you can generate, how many distinct strings that you can generate that are of length 3. Okay, so you are starting with A, B, C, A, D. Okay, so if you are trying to generate a string of length 3, tell me how many characters you are going to remove. You are going to remove 2 characters, right? So let me remove 2 characters from this particular string. What are the options I have? For the first character deletion, I have these 2 options. So when I apply both of these options, the strings that I generate is one of the possible string is A, C, A, D. And when I delete this B, that is my second character, I obtain. This is when I delete my second character, I obtain A, C, A, D. And when I delete my first character, I, I obtain B, C, A, D. Similarly, from these two strings, I have two options. For this particular string, again, I have two options. And for this particular string, I have two options. So let's generate strings from both the options. So the strings that I will obtain is C, A, D, that is removing the first character. And A, A, D, that is removing the second character. Similarly, over here, C, A, D by removing the first character. And B, A, D by removing the second character, right? And we have already removed two characters and we have generated a string of length 3. Can you count the number of distinct strings that you got? 1, 2, 3. So the number of distinct strings that were of length 3 with original string as this was obtained as 3. Now let me tell you how, we, how you can do this. Like if you are uh, thinking that okay, I, I, what I will do is from my string I will explore both the options that is either I will remove this particular character or this particular character and form all the possible combinations but if you try to do that the time complexity will come out to be bigger of 2 power n isn't it because at every possible step you are exploring two possible options 
So this is something that is not desired as you can look up to the expected time complexity. Then how can you actually solve this? How can you tell that, okay, for a particular string length, how many distinct possible strings are possible? So just look up over here, just observe that when I told you that I want to remove two possible, uh, that I want to form a string of length three. So the original string was A, B, C, A, D. When I told you that I want to form a string of length three, so just observe, just observe one thing. This AD was a common part in all the strings. So what is the conclusion we are able to draw from here? The conclusion that we are able to draw that we are never able to delete these two characters. And for the third character, since we are forming a string of length 3, so the third character is nothing but it is any one of the character of these remaining characters. It is any one of the character of these remaining characters and you can look up over here. The three distinct characters over here were A, B and C. So three possible distinct strings. In one we had A, in one we had C and in one we had B. And why is it actually working? It is because, see, when I tell you that I want to remove two characters, so you can remove any two characters from these three characters. You can remove any two characters. Just see. If I have this ABC, if I tell you that I want to remove this B and C. So what you can do? In the first operation, you can remove this B. And in the second operation, you can remove this C. So you are able to, able to remove these two characters. Similarly, if I tell you I want to remove this AB. So in the first operation, you remove this A. And in the second operation, you remove this B. Similarly, I tell you that if I tell you that I want to remove this A and C, so in the first operation you remove this A and in the second operation you remove this C. So the conclusion is that from these three characters I can remove any of the two characters and I can never remove these two characters. So can I say, can I say that if I am, if I want to form a string of length I, if I want to form a string of length i from let's suppose this string that is having a length of n, so last i minus 1 characters, last i minus 1 characters will never change. They will be as it is. And for the ith character, I can choose any of the characters that occurs in this part of the string. So can I say the total number of strings of length i that I can generate is nothing but the total number of distinct characters in this part of the string. Isn't it? If I have something, if I have some mechanism by which I can find the total number of distinct characters in this particular end of the string, then I can easily answer that how many distinct strings of length i I can generate. Once I am able to figure out that, okay, for any length i, how to find the total number of distinct strings. So I can run a loop for simple i equals to 5, i equals to 4, i equals to 3, i equals to 2, i equals to 1. And I can sum up all these values, or basically starting with n, i equals to n, n minus 1, n minus 2 up till n. I can sum up those values and get my desired result. So this is how actually you are going to solve the question. Now the only thing left is, how we can actually find the number of distinct characters. So you can either use a map or a set to find the total number of distinct characters, right? You can either use a map or set. Let me dry run for an example so that you will get it. Let me tell you that the starting string is A, B, A, C, okay? So first of all, tell me the total number of distinct strings. Uh, let me keep a map. Let me keep a map. This is actually a frequency map. This actually stores the frequency of all the characters. So first of all, I am at the first place. So I simply increase the frequency of A by 1. So my frequency of A become 1. And I will keep a variable count, which will basically tell me the number of distinct characters I got. Now once my frequency of any of the character becomes 1, can I say that this is actually the first time I have encountered this character? So can I increment the count of my distinct character? So my count of distinct character becomes 1. So what I know is that, okay, if I am if I am trying to form a string of length 4, so the total number of possible strings are nothing but a total number of distinct characters till this particular point, which is 1. So I simply add 1 to my answer. Plus, 
I move on to the next index. So I simply increment the frequency of B. So frequency of B becomes 1. And now since I have encountered a new character, since the frequency of the character is 1, this means that I have encountered a new character. So I simply increment the count of my distinct characters. And the total number of strings that I can form of length 3 is nothing but 2. Because I have two distinct characters that can be for, that can be placed at this third position. Similarly, I move on to the next index now. Simply increment the frequency of A. So frequency of A becomes 2. But at this point of time, I don't increase my count of distinct characters because, the, because I have already counted A once. So when I am trying to form a string of length 2, I have two possible distinct strings that can be formed. Because for this particular position, I have two options. That is either A or B. So the two possible distinct strings that can be formed are either AC or BC. Similarly, when I move on to this particular index, I encounter a new character. So I simply increment the frequency of C. And since I have encountered a new character, so increase my count of distinct characters. So it becomes 3. And total number of distinct strings that is possible of length 1 is nothing but 3. So the possible number of distinct strings are either A, B or so I simply sum up these values. So sum of these values is 5 plus 2 plus 7 plus 1, 9. So, uh, sorry, 5 plus 2, 7 plus 1, 8. So the answer, the answer to this will be 8. So this is actually what the logic of this question is. So let's jump through the code, jump onto the code and let's see. Okay. So this is actually the code to this question. Just a minute. So first of all, what I did, I took the number of test cases as input, then I took input of n and string s, and I con I just constructed a map of character comma n, which is which will basically store the frequency of character, and I kept uh, kept a variable count, which will basically store the count of distinct variable uh, characters, and I stored I constructed a vector distinct, distinct of i will basically tell me that from index zero till index i how many distinct characters exist okay so what i do is i simply iterate over this n loop i increment the count of uh, the particular character frequency of particular character and if the frequency is 1 i simply increment the count of my distinct character and in my distinct of i this vector distinct of i i simply assign this count that is basically from index 0 to index i we have count number of distinct characters now to uh, find out the answer we initialize our answer to 0 simply iterated over the loop from 0 to n and to my answer I simply added distinct of i and at the end I am printing my answer which will be which will store the actual total number of distinct strings that are possible this is actually the code to this question what's the time complexity if I talk of time complexity then this loop runs for n and since inside this loop we are using map so there can be different things like you can either use map you can either use set so since we have used map, so the complexity of map, since as we know, is log n. So the complexity of this loop will be n log n. And over here, we are running a loop of n. So complexity of this loop will be n. So we can say that the total time complexity will be nothing but, total time complexity will be nothing but, we go off n log n. That is the higher of the two. What's the space complexity? If I talk of space complexity, so you can see over here we have made a vector uh, for storing the distinct characters count. We have a string s and we are also having a map that is storing all the frequency of every character. So the space complexity in this case will be nothing but big of n. Isn't it? Because we have a vector of size n and we have a map which are storing n characters. So yeah. This is the time and space complexity of this code and this time complexity is well within the expected time complexity. So yeah, it will give you AC in your code submission. So I hope all of you got it. Thank you.